Welcome to my lecture online. Let's review the electric flux. What is the concept and what does it actually mean? So here again we have an object that contains some positive charge and now we know that there's an electric field emanating from that charge and so what we've done here is we've drawn some spheres, think of these not as circles but as spheres around that charge. Think of it as three-dimensional. So by definition the electric flux which this is a symbol right here, is simply the dot product between the strength of the electric field and the surface area of any one sphere you draw around the charge. Now it doesn't have to be a sphere, there's other geometric shapes and we'll get into that in a moment, but here we're drawing a sphere around it and so the electric flux, the, the lines that we drew graphically representing the electric field, you can think of those as the graphical representation of electric flux. The more lines you have, well, that depends on how much charge you have. The more charge you have, the more lines you'll have, the more flux you will have, electric flux. Now notice it doesn't matter where I draw the sphere. I can draw a small sphere, a bigger sphere, a big sphere. And in each case, the amount of flux, the amount of electric field lines cutting through the sphere does not change, regardless of the size. You go, well, wait a minute. You just told me that it's a product between the strength of the electric field and the area of that sphere and the bigger you make the sphere don't you expect more flux but then what happens is the further out you go from the source of the electric field the weaker the field becomes in such a way that the product of the electric field strength at any point away from this charge here here or here multiply times the area that product will always be the same and that's what's called the electric flux. The electric flux doesn't change from a source that produces the flux. Now notice that that product, of course, is the magnitude of the electric field times the magnitude of the area, simply the size of the area, times the cosine of the angle between them. Now, if the electric field lines go through the area perpendicular to the surface, then of course you have the maximum flux. So let's come over here and take a look at a slightly different situation. So here we have, let's say, a plate that contains positive charge and a plate that contains negative charge. So we have two plates opposite one another with a small distance in between. And when you have a situation like that, you end up with a uniform electric field from the positive charge to the negative charge. Later on we'll know that this is like a capacitor. And so a uniform electric field means that the magnitude of the electric field remains constant. So it's the same strength electric field anywhere you look. So now when you draw a small surface, like a, a rectangular surface, you can then see how much flux goes to that small surface. And then if you draw a bigger surface, you can see that the bigger surface contains or has more flux lines, more electric field lines going through it. So the flux would be much greater here than here because the electric field strength is the same, but A is bigger. So that gives you more flux through that, that rectangular area. You can think of it in a little bit more general terms. Let's say that we have an area like this. We have a normal vector to the area. And so we can then say that the flux, and here we have an electric field. Notice the electric field is perpendicular to the plane of the area or parallel to the normal of the area. And so that means that E dot A, as we have over here, simply now becomes the magnitude of the electric field times the size of the area times the cosine of the angle between the direction of the electric field and the direction of the normal. Now you say, well, wait a minute, it's in the opposite direction. Should you have 180 degrees and therefore you have a negative flux? Well, we should put absolute value signs around it because there's no such thing as negative flux. There's just flux and there's a direction to the flux lines. And now here you can see that if it's at an angle relative to the normal, we then have to find out what that angle is. And then we say, well, it's simply the product of the strength of the field times the size of the area times the cosine of the angle between the normal vector and the direction of the electric field. It's parallel, it's maximum, cosine of zero is one. And if it's perpendicular, in other words, if the, field, if the electric field lines are parallel to the surface of the area, then none of them will go through the area and then the flux will be zero through that surface. So those are concepts that are very important, especially later on when we talk about Gauss's law. So they'll come in handy at that point, but here's just the basic concept of what flux is and how to calculate it. And that is how it's done.